we're going to be making dinner today and it's going to be comprised of uh an open-faced turkey burger with uh tomato cucumber salad and then for the open face part of it, we're going to be making a fresh baguette. So we're going to start the process by making our baguette, since it takes the longest to do. So we're going to start out with um, some flour, about 120 grams. And I like using grams when I'm baking, just because it's a little bit more ac accurate. Um, about four grams of uh, instant yeast and about three grams of sea salt. Kind of stir it all together a little bit here. And then to that, we're going to add 96 grams of room temperature water. And if you hear a lot of noise in the background, it's because, uh, as always, we're in our RV and we're in Gallup, New Mexico right now, and it's extremely windy. I think we're supposed to get gust up to 50 today. Um, hopefully the weather holds out because when we make our turkey burgers later on, we're going to be doing them out on our Kenyan grill. So as you can see, the dough comes together really quick and then uh, we'll get it, let it sit here, let it rest for about half an hour. And then we're going to fold it and let it rest for another half an hour. And then we're going to shape it into our baguette. So we're going to cover our, our dough with a little bit of plastic wrap here and let it rest for about a half an hour. Let the gluten develop and relax. Set it aside. So next on the list for our dinner, we're going to be making, um, what are we going to be making? Oh, I know. We're going to be making a tomato cucumber salad. So we're going to start out with uh, about a cup of grape tomatoes. And there's a way of slicing it like this, but I don't want to dirty extra dishes and I don't want to cut my hand like I usually do. So I'm going to just cut them in half real quick. Lengthwise, not, not widthwise. Right. So I'm just cutting these in half. because nobody wants to get a whole tomato with their cucumber salad. Put them in a bowl. And I have part of a cucumber here. I'm just going to peel part of it, or partially peel it, I should say. Okay, there's no trick to that, right? No real trick to it. <laughs> I prefer to go... Uh, go uh, towards me as opposed to away from me. So I'm going to cut this in half. And then I, for this type of salad, I like to take out the seeds. If you want to leave them in, that's okay. Do you do anything with those seeds after? Nope, you throw them away. Okay, you don't plant them and grow your own. Well, you suppose stuff. you could if you wanted to. So I think I'll cut this again into a quarter, and cut it into chunks like so. So I'm going to just cut a slice of this about a quarter of an inch thick and cut it into chunks. You know, uh, one of my biggest things to overcome when I started just cooking at home was portion sizes, just Sharon and I. And so when I first started, or not when I first started, but when I cook at home, we originally had, you know, there was five of us. So I was just had to tone it down a little bit. But then now it's just Sharon and I, and I'm having to gradually learn how to cook small. So I added a half a teaspoon of Italian herbs, and I'm just gonna Give it a good drizzle of olive oil and a dash of red wine vinegar. So it's nice and tart. 
And if it gets too tart, I can always add a bit of sugar to uh, bring down the acidity level. So we're taking a little break while the uh, dough right or dough proofs a little bit and the salad marinates and we're going to get everything ready for our turkey burgers. I'm going to start out with some garlic. I think just two cloves will do it. So I give it a little smash there to loosen up the paper on the garlic. Cut off the stem end or the root end. Give it a good whack. Now, if I was doing this for a steak, say, I would uh, take it from this point, I would put some fresh ground salt and pepper on it, and then I would rub it like this with my knife and some olive oil. And I'd rub it like this with my knife to kind of puree it, and then I would season my steak with it. But since this is going in our burger, I'm just going to chop it real fine. And put it in a container. And set it aside for later. So our dough is rested for about a half about a half an hour. I'm going to give it a fold this way and then this way. And then this way. And one last time and flip it over seam side down, tuck it in and let it rest for another half an hour. So we've got our second set of folds with our baguette. It was really sticky and it helps to, to moisten your hands a little bit. Flip it around. Now we're going to let it rest for an hour. And next we will shape it. Yeah. All right, so it's been an hour. Our dough's risen some. And we're going to pull it out of the bowl here. Put it on our countertop. And shape it. I'm going to shape it into a rectangle. And then we'll roll it up and form it. We'll start by coming from the top. You want to kind of pinch fold it as you go. You can do it a couple different ways. You can use your fingertips or you can use the side of your hand you yeah, karate chop right yeah right the idea is to seal it up nice and tight get it like so now normally what you do is you put it in a towel and let it raise up but uh don't have that ability right now and you bake it in a dutch oven unfortunately with our easy bake um RV oven, we don't have room for a Dutch oven in there. So we're just going to put it in um, an aluminum an aluminum pan. And we're going to cover it up. Kind of Scrunch it up here a little bit. I'm going to cover it up with a, another piece, or a piece of foil. Let it sit for about an hour, another hour. To raise up and turn the oven on to 450 degrees and uh and then when it's ready to come out we'll or when it's ready to go in we'll take the foil off and we'll score the top of it 
um, and then pop, pop it in the oven, cover it for about 10 minutes, and then uncover it for about 10 minutes, and we'll have a nice loaf of bread. And it's time for our baguette to come out of the oven. Well, maybe not quite. Probably take another four or five minutes. Okay, we gave it another four minutes to get a little bit uh, more brown. And it looks pretty good. That's the problem with baking in an RV oven, as you can see, it gets uh, very brown on the bottom, even though I have put a, a uh, pizza stone in there to try and diffuse it, it doesn't necessarily work all that well. One of the pleasures of working in an easy bake RV oven. All right, so now we're on to our turkey burgers. Um, because turkey is so lean, we're going to add some fat in the form of olive oil and then some herbs like parsley and some uh, fresh uh, garlic and some salt and pepper. As you can see, it's 93% lean. So if we're going to grill this, we want to add some fat to it so that it doesn't dry out too much. So I'm going to start with some fresh ground pepper. This is oakwood smoked pepper. And because turkey is pretty bland, you have to add some salt to it as well as the pepper to bring out some flavor. I like using pink salt. Pink salt because of the added uh, minerals and nutrition to it. So I've got some parsley that I chopped up. And then some garlic. No vampires tonight. We'll kind of like push that down in there. Olive oil. And kind of gently mix it together. You don't want to over mix it. I'll start making it tough and chewy. And I'm doing this on some plastic wrap so that all I have to do is just throw it in the trash. It's part of the cleanup. These would be some uh, pretty large burgers. But since we're having just a salad with it, we'll keep the uh, <clears throat> keep the total calorie count down. All right, divide this into two patties. Oh, that's cold. You want to work with your meat as cold as possible. Helps keep it <clears throat> helps keep it moist and everything in there, all all the stuff added to it. There we have it, turkey burgers. So I put the turkey burgers in the fridge to hold them until we're ready to get cooking. Um, the wind is still really hooking outside. So I don't know if we're going to be able to cook them on the Kenyan. I can bring the Kenyan in, but then it'll set off the smoke, smoke alarm. Um, so yeah, I don't know what we're going to do here just yet. We'll find out. Well, the uh, grilling is out because not only have the winds been blowing over 40 miles an hour, now it is raining. Surprise, surprise. And they told me it never rains in, in Gallup, New Mexico. Today it does. So anyways, I broke out cast iron frying pan 
and I cooked up a little bit of bacon to go on these burgers. And I already toasted the bread, a little crustini to go on the bottom. Um, I've got some, um, <clears throat> which flavor is this? Oh, it's just blue cheese. I thought it was gorgonzola, but it's just blue cheese. Anyway, so we're going to cook up these burgers now. I took most of the fat out of, out of the uh, pan from cooking the bacon. And what I didn't take out, the bread soaked up. So we're going to let these get a little crisp on that side before I move them around too much. As you can see, as I'm turning these, there's not a lot of fat, if any, coming out of these. I'm trying not to smash them down like that because then all the juices run out. Dry burger city. Nobody likes a dry burger. So there's a little extra added flavor because the blue cheese tends to be very salty and I've got bacon on there and I've really spiced up the, uh, the bur or salted the burgers and peppered them and everything like that. We're going to add a little bit of, of some cranberry balsamic sauce I made. Kind of uh, lighten it up some. Or give it that sweet and salty effect. Something I really like. <clears throat> give this a chance to melt in there some. Add our blue cheese to the top. Up until I was in culinary school, I never really appreciated blue cheese, but now it's a thing with me, so I've learned to appreciate it. So as you can see, the uh, blue cheese has melted a bit and uh, the burgers are done, so we're going to take them out of the pan, put them on top of our bacon-covered crostini. <clears throat> Along with our cucumber tomato salad, and dinner is served. So what do you think of that burger? It's delicious. You like that blue cheese cranberry balsamic combo? It's wonderful. It's very um, Thanksgiving-y. <laughs>